Welcome back uh, to learnpiezo.org free online course about piezo electricity. Uh, so today on Learn Piezo, we're going to be talking about material properties in general. And what I mean by this is we're going to be speaking about mechanical properties of materials and electrical properties. Okay, <clears throat> just as a uh, you know prelude, uh, piezoelectric materials, uh, there are unique qualities that they couple these properties. Uh, but, but before we talk about that coupling, uh, the electromechanical coupling existing in piezoelectric materials will discuss, you know, these different types of properties, electrical and mechanical, uh, separately. So the properties uh, or the quantities uh, for that are important to consider when I mean, considering mechanical properties and behavior uh, is force, stress, it is displacement. Strain, Young's modulus, compliance, mass, and density. Uh, with regards to the electrical uh, properties and quantities, we have voltage. electric field capacitance charge primitivity or dielectric primitivity permittivity and electric displacement So as you may notice, some of these properties are related, uh, if you already have an idea about uh, these basic properties and quantities. I'm covering this because although this is really basic material, and many, you know, a person learning about PS electric materials is always obviously probably going to know what force is. Uh, but this, I feel, will be a good recap of, uh, of these basic properties. And a good understanding of these properties and quantities are very necessary in order to understand more advanced concepts so you don't get lost later on. So I'll begin uh, with covering force. And, you know, you probably learned a lot about it in your uh, you know basic physics courses, drawing free body diagrams and um, and whatnot. But I'll, again, I'll explain this uh, pro uh, this quantity in very simple terms uh, that which will be useful later on. So a force. So a force, you know, acting on a body, you know, with a certain mass. So we have a block here. We have a mass, and let's say we have it, you know, in a gravitational field, which causes a force. So we have a force gravity. You know, this is nothing new. We have the mass. We have the force gravity, and we find, you know, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So this is a you know, very basic uh, concept and we're very familiar with it, but just to reviewing, reviewing it for our, uh, to refresh our knowledge. So, but the next point uh, I'm going to speak about is stress. Or we can kind of think of it as that pressure. Uh, they're kind of the same thing. So for stress or pressure. So in real life, there's no such thing as a point mass. See right now when we apply this force, we're applying it on a mass which is concentrated uh, in a space. And then there we, therefore we call it a point mass and there we, we can draw a force like this, force like that. And because it's only being uh, applied on a point mass. But in real life, we have you know, actual things with actual dimensions. So we have a block. A block is not a point mass. It actually has you know, it has a it has dimensions. So the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height, 
we have it has a certain density by which we can define its mass. So rho, which is the mass density, whose units are uh, kilograms per meter cubed. So we multiply that by the length, the width, the height, and therefore we get the units kilograms. So basically, this is a mass. And whenever we apply a force, we're not applying a force per se. We're actually applying a pressure or a stress. So think about this. You know, you have a table in front of you or a computer in front of you, and you have, uh, you know, it's a flat surface, right? And you want to push it. And let's say you want to push it with your hand. So basically, uh, what we're going to look like on the stress, you're going to actually be applying stress over an area, you know, five fingers for humans, uh, a stress over an, an area. So the, over this whole area, you'll be applying a stress, which will then be apply an equivalent force to that, that surface. So we have a stress, which is actually going to be don uh, denoted as sigma. That's the, name, the, the, the symbol which I'll be using for stress, is sigma. So when we apply sigma, whose units are newtons per meter squared of force over an area, and we apply that over an area, so let's say we have, you know, this, you're applying over, you know, the area of your hand, the area of your hand, that is equal to equivalent force. So this is how, again, we use this free body diagram. We didn't consider the force or the stress. We didn't consider the area, but we knew there was a force. They said, okay, you push this much, five newtons on this mass. I didn't say that you push with this stress on this area, so five newtons per meter squared is the stress times the area, let's say, I don't know, one meter squared, thus you apply five newtons. And the mass is, the density is this, and the length and the width and the height of the material is this, and the, you know, and then therefore you calculate the mass, and then you, then again, you can bring this back, this equation back, force equals mass times acceleration, because you found the equivalent mass from uh, this, and then you found the equivalent force from this, or you know here, you found the equivalent force, and therefore you can come up with this acceleration. So again, this is the uh, method uh, by which you calculate forces and stresses. So those are the similarities. So stress is actually the re a real quantity uh, that's actually going to be felt. So over a an area, and that equals a and that equals a force, which you can then simplify the problem and uh, consider uh, other quantities you're interested in.